All right. Welcome, everyone. Sorry that we're starting late. I just totally lost track of time. I did not realize what time it was. So we're starting now. Welcome, everyone. So you can't draw with us, Scribble Soothe, but I'm glad you're stopping by to say hello. All right. Let's, uh, let's get started. So as usual, we got five minutes on the clock for our five minute warm up. Ready, go. I'm gonna draw really fast and see, see how fast I can get something out. So I just thought of a question. Um, what do you feel like are some benefits to drawing quickly and and loosely, not worrying about all the little details? Because I know some uh, some artists, a lot of artists, um, when they start off, um, when they start drawing and are just beginning, um, they really focus on every detail right up front. Yeah, it makes it so that you can get, it's easier to get more accurate proportions and um, I don't know. It's easier to get more accurate proportions. It makes it so you don't get so far down the road and then realize that you're gonna have to change stuff, but you're already so like invested in it because you've done all this detail work, you don't wanna mess up. And so then you kind of just end up leaving it how it is and then it ends up not looking as good as it could have been. So that's what I think the benefit is. Yeah, I'd agree with that. A lot of times you get, if you get uh, too worried about the details up front, then, then you get the proportions wrong or you realize that you don't even like where it's going. And then you just spend all this time trying to perfect something that that's not even working out, so. Yeah, people, when people look at an image, they don't look at the detail first. They look at the overall composition, they look at the silhouette, they look at the colors. Um, all that stuff is a lot more fundamental than any of the detail stuff. And if you don't have that stuff right on, then your details aren't really going to matter. It's cool to see how quickly you're already blocking out a creature, um, how it's already beginning to take form and, and and how you did that so quickly. And really, I think, yeah, it's just very important to, to start loose. And so I really like the warm ups. I think it's a really cool thing that you do. Sophia says, good morning, Austin and Caleb, and everyone here. Good morning. Sophia, what are you drawing today? And what's everyone drawing today? Let us know in the chat. An angel sculpture is what Sophie is drawing. Nice. That sounds cool. Looks like Sayoko saying in class, one of our project is to design a vinyl and that cover. I can't wait to start drawing it. Oh, that's cool. 
Romina Tempest is saying, Morning all. I'm working on a King Kong commission for someone. That's Sketching sweet. various poses now. That sounds really fun. Yeah, King Kong's legit. These are some cool projects. Done. We got pretty far. You could tell that it's a thing. Yeah, totally can. That was really quick. Let's go drawing says great sketch idea. Great work. Um, Andre Paolo says, hello, I started to use Procreate two days ago. Have any tips for me to understand what brush to use and other little things? Please slow down because I don't speak English very well. All right. I'll check it by my breakfast real quick. Mm -hmm. All right, Andre. So, you started Procreate. What brush to use? Well, it is going to depend on what you want to be doing. If you're sketching, I personally like the fat pencil with the maximum size increased. Um, I mean, the short answer that I tell people is... The right brush is whatever brush works for you. You know, just experiment. That's what I did. I experimented with a bunch until I found one that I like. And I have a whole course on just Procreate that goes into every single menu, every tool, every aspect of it uh, that you can check out. So I'd recommend that. And all my uh, courses are on sale for January, so... Is there a challenge today or are people drawing whatever they want? Whatever you want. I'm doing reference today. Sticking on the reference train for a while. Maybe we'll do another challenge here soon or prompt. But yeah. Another Aztec Mayan fella here. Nice. Oh, he's got the similar... Yeah. Like in leopard spot kind of deal and the the things around his his yeah. legs there. He looks like they might be buddies. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, so what are some of the things that you're going to be looking for as you start to block out this uh, picture? What are some things that are going through your mind as you're starting the outline? Uh, angles of things, proportions, overall shapes. Like I'm in my head, I'm constantly checking where things line up um, on the body and different things like that, like where certain breaks and corners happen. Um, I'm going to try doing this one today without doing the anatomy underlay like I did yesterday. See if I can speed it up and still have it look right. Might not be able to, but we're going to find out.
All right, we got any more questions? Let's see. Sayoka so saying, hmm, I think I'll draw an alleyway as I don't draw buildings or perspectives, which will have stray cats there too. So mine is to draw something new with something I've drawn a lot. Nice. It's pretty cool to reach outside of your comfort zone and draw something that you you're not familiar with. Okay. More loves the subject. I'm guessing he's referring to the, uh, Aztec warrior guy that you're doing. I actually saw K more on Facebook in the Facebook group. K more is a woman. Awesome. So now you know. It's not my old, she's not my old choir teacher. going to add the link to the Facebook page so you guys can all go there if you haven't already. And please make sure to post your sketches and drawings there and share with us what you guys what you guys have been up to and you know uh, as far as your artwork goes and um, what you guys have been learning. Darren Cornelius is asking, do you use any apps to help with poses, et cetera, like art pose? If so, what would you recommend? Yeah, I do use art pose. I really like art pose. Actually, I have a video, like a tutorial on how to use it and all its features and stuff. So yeah, I like art pose. That's a great app. Cool. Yeah. I also bought like the Proco pose pack thing that they have with like all the images, but I haven't, I haven't really used it, but I paid all like 200 bucks for it. It has like a thousand images or something. I can't remember. I don't remember exactly how much it cost and everything it had, but I bought it and used it like once so far, but it's got a lot of pictures in it. Do you recommend some book or something to practice anatomy? Um... I don't know. I don't really do a lot of human anatomy stuff. Human anatomy for artists is probably like the go-to one. I don't know. I have a bunch on my shelf. But my study of human anatomy, like I've done studies and stuff like that, but I just haven't done it consistently enough to really be any sort of an expert or anything. Uh, let's see. Drawing. Um, What's it called? Successful Drawing and Drawing Hands and Heads by Andrew Loomis are both really good. And how's Loomis spelled? Loomis is L-W-W-M-I-S. Um, yeah. M-I-S. L -W or sorry, not W. L-O-O. Okay. Yeah, he's got fantastic books on... 
anatomy and drawing, I would say he's probably a good one to go to. Also, check out anatomy360.com. That was a good one. We've got tons of resources there. There's some really cool post packs uh, with Anatomy360 where you can take the 3D model and change the lighting and and um, change positions and stuff like that. It's really cool. Yeah, that's kind of how art pose is. It's probably a little bit more limited since it's an app, but yeah, you can do all that stuff. Yeah, it's got skeleton, muscles, skin, everything. Is there a point in your art journey where you felt you've made it or been satisfied with your work? I know the journey never ends, though. It's uh, a good question. I think I feel like, yeah, I think I feel satisfied with my work pretty often. Like, I feel like I could be better. And I also feel dissatisfied with my work pretty often, but I feel like uh, I'm able to make art that I enjoy looking at and that I feel like if I saw someone else create, I would enjoy and think it was good. Um, there's still definitely room for improvement. And there's a lot of areas where I make art that I'm not satisfied with that I wish was better and that didn't turn out how I wanted. Um, yeah, I don't really think you ever quite make it. I don't know. I mean, I guess like, Financially, I feel like I'm pretty well off and in a good spot in that aspect. Like career-wise, I've got to a point where I'm like, okay, I don't have to like be so desperate all the time for like going from job to job trying to like just make that next paycheck. But even in that aspect, I still think there's room for improvement and growth and stuff. So the answer is yes, I make art that I am satisfied with but that I also still make art sometimes that I'm not satisfied with and that, no, I don't feel like I've made it, so to speak, that there's still a lot of room for me to uh, improve. So hopefully that answers your question. Adriafro asks, sometimes don't you feel that dynamic poses are way easier than static ones? Yeah, I do. Actually, I agree. I don't know why. Interesting, huh? It's like feels, I don't know. I feel like there's more 
I don't know. I don't know why that is, but yeah, that's a good point. It does seem like it's a lot easier than someone just like standing there. Never thought about that, but yeah, I do feel like that as well. All right, we're at 30 minutes. Okay. Darren Cornelia says, wow, thanks. That's a great answer. It gives me hope. I really do appreciate the answer. No problem. Edraffo says, I thought maybe I was the only one. No, I think that's something that I don't know. I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find an artist who is like, I've made it, I I did it. Even I think even the better the artist gets, the more likely they are to say that, yeah, I still got a lot of work to do. But I don't know. There might be some out there. I'm not an artist whisperer. <laughs> Did you have to learn to market yourself online as an artist or was it a case of just um, where you keep posting your work to all platforms? Um, well, those aren't really mutually exclusive. I'd say, yeah, I had to learn how to market myself online as an artist. And one of the ways was to post my work online a lot. That's not the only thing you need to do, but yeah, you'd have to learn some stuff to help with that. Like with my YouTube channel and stuff, I did a lot of research on how to make good thumbnails and titles and what type of videos to make and focusing on my target audience and with my courses, a lot of stuff on how to build up a student base, especially starting from basically scratch. Because when I started teaching on Udemy, I didn't really have any followers or anything. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff I had to learn to get myself out there and my art. I mean, there's still plenty of stuff I'm learning. I have a decent following, but I'm not like huge. There's still a lot of room for growth. So yeah, it's still a lot of learning to do. Matthias Mesquita is asking, I have, or I think I have a good level to start working with commissions and illustration. How and where should I start looking for potential clients? Um, you should post your work online. Depends on what kind of concept or what kind of commissions you want to 
pick up honestly i mean are you looking at doing like illustration or like it's pretty broad there's going to be a different route to take depending on what it is you're wanting to do so i don't know maybe clarify a little be a little bit more specific are you wanting to do like furries for people they're furry characters are you wanting to do concept art for like games or movies? So while uh, Matthias is um, responding to that, Samantha Pixley has a question. Where did you learn about creating your course and YouTube channel, etc.? cetera? Um, my brother mostly. <laughs> He did it first. He learned from um, what's his name? I can't remember his name. He is a really big course person on Udemy. He sells his course on his own website now, but I learned from him, from my brother. And my brother learned from that guy whose name I can't remember right now. Um, and yeah, that's where. Excuse me. Matthias responds, I illustrated a few covers and small projects for magazines, and I really like editorial, the editorial area. Wanted to make it more often. Um, and Adria Fro says, salute, which means bless you. Thanks. <laughs> um, well, then uh, I'm going to be honest and say I'm not really, I don't know how you would get into the editorial business. Not really my wheelhouse, but I will say if you go watch uh, Will Terry's YouTube channel, he talks a lot about that because he still is an active freelance artist and is really successful. Um, as well as Lee White, he doesn't really like me at all. We got in a we got in this agreement and he got pretty mad at me, but um, I'll still do a plug for him even though he doesn't like me, but. Yeah, his he un, he does SVS Learn, and he's also talks. I'm pretty sure they have a course on it on SVS Learn on how to start out, like how to get commissions and all that stuff, how to basically be a freelance artist. So, and that's Lee L E E. Uh, yeah, Lee White.
Andre Paolo says, how can I export my, let's see, how can I export only my sketch without background or specify layers and how you manage layers in your project? Say that one more time. So uh, I think it's a few questions. How can I export only my sketch without a background? Would be the first one. Okay. So to do that, you just make your sketch on its own separate layer like this. See how I have it on its own layer? It's not attached to the background. Then I'm going to turn off the background layer. It might be hard to see. We'll do this. I'm going to turn it all white so you can see the line art better. Okay. So you can see I have my line art now. It's on its own layer, separate from the background. Now when I export, uh, I'm going to export as a PNG file right there instead of a JPEG. That should save it so it has a transparent background. All right, next question. Okay, next question is um, how do you specify layers? I'm not sure if they're asking how do you export just one layer. Maybe they're still talking about exporting. Not totally sure on that question. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, so if you could clarify that, Andre, um, if you're asking how do you export just one layer um, or what you mean by specify layers, if you could just kind of clarify what you're asking there. Um, and then the other question is, and how do you manage layers in your project? Um, if it's a big pro, I'm pretty bad actually at layer management. I just... It's, I'm usually pretty disorganized, which is something I need to work on. But sometimes on a good day, I'll make I'll group things by like line art and then flat colors and then like the shading layer and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I don't know, not really anything fancy. Just yeah, I don't know. I don't really have anything, any advice on that. <laughs> How much time we have? 20, we got, 15 minutes? Yeah, a little okay. bit more than that. Um, I mean, I would add for layer management, um, it really helps me um, when I name my layers so I don't have to go through and be trying to remember which one's which, especially when I'm doing just little bits of detail. Um, it helps to to name my layers and group them. I'm, I'm not always great at it, but I've gotten a lot better and it's really made my work go faster and it's been less stressful um, when I'm working on a, on a project and can't find the layer or I've just got this jumbled mess. Sometimes um, it helps to just kind of clear my mind if I've got layers figured out. So um, when I create a layer, I try to um, I try to name it or after I get, um, you know, after I make some progress on a layer and I kind of know what I'm uh, doing with that layer and where I'm going with it, then I'll name it. Um, so I don't know if that if that helps, but there you go. Um, really, there's no secret formula to uh, working with layers. It really is kind of um, what works for you and what helps you um, stay organized and what helps you, you know, get them uh, get the effect and uh, the results that you want. There you go. Do what Caleb said. <laughs> the reality is do whatever works. Yeah, it's art. There's rules, but if the rules aren't working, then break them. <laughs> That's the only rule is if it looks good. So Adri Afro has a great question that I know you um, you touched on um, probably a few times in, in some of the previous uh, daily sketch grinds. Um, they're asking, I was wondering how will I know if my art is pro, is pro level? And, um, and I'm sure you have some things to add, but I just re remember uh, one of your answers to a question similar to this was to look at what pros are doing and to evaluate their art and kind of uh, make your comparisons and, and see if, if your art um, is you know, looks similar or, or has a similar quality to, to it as what the pros in the field are doing. Yep. That's, uh, 
Yep. <laughs> you, I mean, that is a good question to know the answer to whether or not your art is pro, but a better question that I think is what the, the core of it really is. What you really want to know is when, when am I, how do I know I'm good enough to like start working or submitting my portfolio? The answer to that question is you don't, you won't know. You just got to start to start submitting it. Cause you, you won't know if you're good enough until you find out if people want to hire you or not. That's how you'll know. Um, and yeah, if you want to know if your art is pro level, then the easiest way to know if your art is pro level is if people are paying you to make it. That's the definition of professional. <laughs> so uh, if you're getting jobs making your art, you're pro level. Um, that would be kind of like your biggest indicator. So see if you can get some jobs. And if not, then you probably have some work to do if you can't get hired. I mean, it can take some time and you got to know how to put yourself out there and stuff. But um, that would be my advice. Okay, let's get down to business on this freaking face that I'm really nervous about. You could tell because <laughs> I saved it for the very end. Well, it's tricky because there's there's so much going on in the face, and some of those features of the face are kind of hidden by all the, you know, the details, the tattoos, the, the tattoos and stuff. So yeah, yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> Adriafro as adds emojis like uh, the one with the sweat drop and the steam coming out of the nose and <laughs> yep that's me right now what app are you using procreate oh I think they were talking to Andre Paolo when he was asking about uh, the layers and stuff like that so it seemed like they were asking Andre what what app you're oh. using but either way it's procreate gotcha because uh andre mentioned earlier in the chat that he had just, just started, started procreate yeah. yeah and samantha pixley says what would you say is the best way to sell your art as in where would you suggest to start selling it um well if it's traditional art i would start selling it at like farmers markets and stuff like that or try getting it in galleries if it's digital art i would start selling prints or you could go on society six or um society six what's that it is a sort of like a print on demand service where you can go on there and upload your images and sell them on like mugs or t-shirts or phone cases or like whatever you want cool. and then they take a cut and you get a cut and you don't make a ton of money though um unless your art is really really popular and really good selling prints of it um it's probably gonna be your slowest route to making money it's possible but you're gonna you kind of need to build up a following first um i mean you can still sell it it's just, you're not gonna make a ton of money it's going to be kind of a really slow roll at first. You'll probably be able to make money faster by selling your services as an artist first and then building up a following and selling your art. Or the quick and easy way is to do fan art. <laughs> um, but yeah, going to conventions, painting and drawing things that people are interested in. Um you're going to have a lot harder time trying to sell your own IP. Like if you're you know, painting characters and stuff that you've come up with, it's going to be harder to sell those than well-known characters. Um, yeah, people need to have or more, to more broad appeal type things, you know.
and that's not to say that you can't sell you know your own characters and stuff but i would say definitely it's it's harder because people don't necessarily have an emotional connection to it at all or or some kind of you know previous experience with those characters yeah that's challenging I would say, I mean, along the lines of what Austin's already said, I mean, it really depends on what art you're doing. Um, and you kind of look at where other people are, uh, are selling their artwork. Um, you know, if you can find successful artists that are drawing or painting uh, similar things as you, uh, then look to see where where they're making money and where they're sharing their art and how they're getting um, recognition. And, um, and um, I'd say, you know, if you wanna just start selling your artwork, you can start with family and friends and let them know what you, um, what you do. And, you know, there's a possibility there. Um, I, I'm gonna interject. I actually think you shouldn't start with family and friends because this is, and this is my opinion. I'm not saying this is like gospel truth, but that's my opinion. I think that when you start with family and friends, you end up setting yourself up for a way you undervalue yourself because they're going to be like, Oh, you're my buddy or whatever. They're not someone looking for professional artists they are either looking for like a fun little thing, or they're looking to do you a favor by hiring you. And they're not going to want to pay what your skills are actually worth. They're going to want to pay 50 bucks, maybe a hundred bucks when really you should be charging two, three, four, five, five hundred bucks. Um, starting out and I think it sets you up to be then when you try and charge those prices and people are like whoa what the heck that's way too expensive puts you in a mindset of oh I'm way overcharging when you're not you're just trying to sell to the wrong market um, and it can really screw with your mindset and like sense of how much what you're doing is worth in the industry um, I don't know that's just my opinion I think that uh yeah, I don't know. If you're gonna do something for friends or family, I just do it for free, honestly. Because uh, when I do, when I charge for friends and family, it sometimes it just kind of creates like a little bit of a bad taste. Because it's like I am doing like you're paying me, but you're paying me like crap money, and it's kind of frustrating, you know. Because then they have this sense of entitlement of like, well, I paid you, so I want it to be like this. I want it to be perfect, you know. And it's like, look, you didn't really pay me that much. Um, this is practically a favor for you, okay? Um, and it can cause some tension. If I'm going to do some art for someone, if I have time, I'll just be like, I'll just do it for free. Um, that's my take on it. I don't know. But, Caleb, you seem like you have a different opinion. What do you think? Um, well, um, you know, I, I kind of see it both ways. I... I agree with you um, in a lot of ways, and and it's sometimes um, I feel like, um, you know, if you're just starting out and just starting to do commissions and stuff like that, um, it can be a good way to to get some good experience and things like that, um, where you might be kind of discouraged if if you don't get paid gigs right off the bat. Um, you know, I'd say if if you feel like your your work is really um, really excellent, and you know and you haven't really done freelance work yet, um, you know, then, then maybe you don't need to go to family and friends for those projects and those, those opportunities. Um, you can go straight to, um, you know, to other people that, that want your art. Um, but I do feel like there's, you know, there can be a lot of valuable experience gained, uh, when you're doing uh, projects for family and friends. And, um, uh, but you know, it does make sense, you know, where you might do it for free and then there's less of an expectation by them to have it be just right or exactly how they want because you know they can't complain too much if they're getting it for free um the other thing too is that maybe not all the time it depends on what your kind of art you're doing but there's a pretty good chance that the art that your friends and family are hiring you to do is not the type of art you want to get hired for when you start like if you're an artist and your friends and family are hiring you um pretty massive chance that they're wanting you to do portraits of them or their kids or their pets um which if you want to be a portrait artist then that's good for you because then you're like oh cool well this is the type of stuff that i want to get hired for well in that case good job 
not nothing wrong there but if you want to be like a creature concept artist or like stuff like that it does end up kind of tying you down to projects and creating portfolio pieces that are not the type of work you want to do which then you can't really put in your portfolio because that's not the type of jobs you're looking for so it's not even like furthering you that way caleb does a lot of portrait stuff and so it's kind of i guess i could see why it would make more sense for him but just like keep that in mind like if you're going to be doing a job that's really cheap I mean, at least hopefully you're doing something that you can put in your portfolio afterwards. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And um, maybe that's the reason why, you know, it worked out great for me at first. Um, I started doing commission um, work when I was 12. And what I was, what I really enjoyed and what I felt like I was really good at was portraits. And so, um, that being the case, yes, my family and friends, you know, all wanted portraits and I didn't need to go. Uh, very far to find people who wanted pictures or portraits of of them or their one of their loved ones or a family member who passed away or um, their pet or something like that. So I had a lot of opportunities um, and was able to draw, um, you know, I've been able to draw, you know, hundreds of portraits. But now that I've done portraits for so many, you know, for so many years, I'm at the point where now I'm ready to to look elsewhere for my commissions. Um, I got to the point where I was just kind of sick of doing portraits. So for the first few years, it was great. Um, but, you know, I did get kind of burnt out from doing, from doing just, you know, uh, pencil portraits and things like that. So now I've, uh, you know, I'm branching out and, and doing things where I still love drawing people, but now I'm doing things like uh, movie posters and, uh, theater posters for live theater and, um, you know, experimenting a lot more with different mediums and exploring more what I like, um, and what I want to do now, um, kind of going away from, from so many traditional portraits. Um, so I'm definitely going to need to go to different sources for, for work there to get, uh, paid jobs. So, yeah, I don't know. Hope that helps. Adri Afro says, what do you think about abstract art? Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's my opinion. I think that, um, I kind of think there's sort of two different types of art or two different reasons for making art fundamentally that it comes down to. Um, there's art that's created for basically the sole purpose of self-expression to kind of like express yourself emotionally or mentally um, through some sort of a visual format. And I would say that most of the time concept art falls into that category. And then there's art that seeks to convey a message or an idea um you know like in like concept art for example or the illustr a book cover or something like that and um i think that they're both different and they both have their purposes and that now this guy's eyes look stupid <laughs> um What was I saying? Oh, so I'm never going to diss someone for expressing themselves artistically if that's what they feel and go for it. You know, I don't think you can say that's good or bad art or anything like that. I do think, though, um, I don't know. I'll say that. It's I'll say this. I was in kind of like the fine art community for a little while. I was I not like crazy, but I did mingle and I would go to gallery strolls pretty regularly and kind of mix with that crowd and go to kind of like critique nights, you know, where like a bunch of artists would get together and bring some pieces of art they were working on and get cre critiques and feedback from other artists and holy crap it was so annoying when someone would bring their art 
it'd be probably more on the abstract side of things, which is totally fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I asked for some feedback, and you'd say things like, well, the uh, composition feels a little bit off balance. Things that are totally valid to any piece of art, whether it's abstract or not. Like, you know, it feels a little bit off balance, or um, uh, I think that if you're wanting this part to be the focal point, then maybe making this adjustment would help with that. And you just could not give them a critique. They didn't really want critiques. They wanted you to fawn over it and admire the emotional expression. It was just so annoying. It was like, dude, okay, this is a waste of my time. Like, this isn't a, you're not really here for a critique. You're here for all these other people to tell you how amazing and how vulnerable it is for you to make something like that and how they love this about it. That always drove me crazy. And I never really had that, seemed to have that problem with you know, concept artists or illustrators, they were never like, it's supposed to be like that or get up. Like there's like, Oh yeah, thanks. I'm good advice. I'm going to fix that. And I think the difference is that when you critique art that someone made out of expression, they feel like you're critiquing them as a person. And the goal isn't, they don't even have the goal. Like they don't care if you like it or not. That's not even the point. Um, but for art where it has kind of like a, like a goal of communication or purpose, uh, they welcome critique because they're like, yeah, I want it to be better. What can I do to fix it? So, yeah, nothing wrong with abstract art. Um, I don't know. There's some art that is abstract art that I think is not very creative um, or demonstrates any real level of skill or artistry or craftsmanship but they could still call it art if they want. But like I went to an art gallery one time and I saw a piece of art that was just, the whole entire canvas was painted black and there was a little strip of burlap sack glued to it. And it was for sale for like $2,000. And uh, sure, you call that art. It might evoke some emotions in some people. Uh, I don't really think that it's very masterful or creative, but... I wouldn't consider you a great artist, but I'm not going to say you didn't make something. <laughs> so I don't know. Hard to say. It's a tricky subject, I think. Because art is pretty subjective. But there you go. That's my official stance. Any more questions? Let's see. Austin, I mean, if you need to export, for example, so this is Andre who's asking about the layers before. Um, so Andre says, I mean, if you need to export, for example, two layers on five you have painted, I'm guessing two layers out of five that you've painted, but I think you answered me. Um, yeah, I would just do it one at a time. And then they should maintain their scale and everything if you have them lined up right and then just post, post put them in whatever canvas you're working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you want to um, export just two layers, you just turn on those two layers and then you can export them together if you want to do that. Just export them together, make sure the other layers are turned off if you don't like those layers or whatever. Um, I don't know if that even fits with the question, but that's what I understood <laughs> of the question. So, for example, if you just want to export your line art, but you don't want to export the, the, the painting yeah. as a whole or something, just make sure that those are turned on, uh, that those layers that you want to export are turned on and the others are temporarily turned off, then export it. 
course, I haven't used Procreate, but I'm I'm sure that it's pretty similar to to Photoshop in that way. All right. Well, we are at time. Are there any last questions before we end? Let's see. Um, this turned out all right. It, I don't know, not as good as yesterday's. I don't think. Samantha Pixley says, "Thank you both. I'm probably more in a position similar to what Caleb." was in do you think that if i draw for family and friends i will have trouble branching out into other fields of art later i, I think, think oh, oh go ahead oh sorry <laughs> i was just gonna say that it if you if you allow it to be that way which i did unfortunately because i didn't kind of realize that i was going to get so burnt out from doing portraits so i just kept doing portraits after portrait after portrait and then I realized, man, I I need to branch out because there's a lot of stuff that I don't know how to do. Um, but you know, nothing's stopping me now from branching out. So it's really just up to you. I think a big thing that can happen is you, if you start doing portraits and then you start making money and you get more and more jobs off of that, but you don't like doing portraits or you don't like whatever the type of commissions you're getting are, but you're getting paid for it. Um, if you keep doing that forever, yeah, you kind of run the risk of like, not getting addicted, but getting like reliant on the money, you know, like you now are dependent on getting that money from doing these portraits, even if you don't like it. So what I would do is just set your goals for yourself. What is it you want to be? What direction you want to go in? And then start making your actions based off of whether or not that commission, whatever it is that you're about to do, is this getting me closer or further from my goals? It might not be what you want to do immediately, but maybe it is getting you closer to your goals because you need a certain amount of money saved up before you can do the next step. Or maybe, I don't know, whatever it might be, it might be getting you closer, but make sure you're doing it consciously and not just kind of like, I guess I'll take this job. I guess I'll take this job until next thing you know, it's been 10 years later and you still, you're known as a portrait guy and you don't even like portraits. So um just think about it. Just be conscious about whatever decision it is that you're making and what you what your goal is, what you're trying to achieve by doing it, what you want the outcome to be. So cool. Um, I'd say the last question is from Andre saying, how can you select the eye to rotate it if you didn't use different layers? Um, I did use different layers. What do you my background is on a different layer than my drawing. I think, well, I don't know if the U is specifically talking about you or just you as in if somebody, like maybe let's say he didn't uh, choose a different layer. I'm wondering if he's talking about how you select a section of the artwork and then move. Oh, how can you do it if you didn't select different layers? Um you would just have to repaint over the rough edges and fix it a little bit. I mean, you still can, you just still use a selection tool. It's just going to be a lot messier um, and you'll have more stuff you'll have to work with, but still doable. There are also some cool tools that Austin uses like a liquify tool that allows you to make some adjustments without having to um, select stuff. So yeah, man. I would experiment with the liquify tool for some you know, some adjustments that can be pretty cool. Liquify for days. <laughs> I love the liquify tool. I don't know. I'm not real happy with this one, honestly. What do you feel like is not working for you there? I don't even know. That's part of the problem. I couldn't tell you. Maybe... Let's try this. That helped a little tiny bit, but <laughs> <laughs> I think his torso is too wide. Let's try one last Hail Mary. <laughs>
don't know. Maybe that helped a little bit. I don't know. I think part of it is this arm feels a little weird. I don't know. Um, it was still a good learning experience. Let's see. Um, last one. If some abstract art that looks like design pieces, but others look like a bad drop of paint on the canvas. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. Some of them do, but it's like, I can't tell you how to express yourself, man. If that's, if you feel like that gets out what you're feeling inside, then paint away, dude. Um, Oops, we got disconnected here. Well, I don't think we got a screen. Oh, there we go. Anyways, so, um, yeah, anyways, that's my take on it. Good job today, everyone. Post your stuff in the Facebook group, and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place, sketching away. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.